Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Oh my God, now I see how many people are here. 14. Guys, that's crazy. Thanks for coming. So, mic check, can you hear me? Is the music too loud? Just let me know if there are any issues. Okay, let's see, who do we have here? Hi, Anna. <laughs> oh, hi, Annie, you again. That's awesome. Mold. I made it. Couldn't watch previous ones. So I'm really happy to be here this time. Thanks for coming. Hi, Carla. Hi, Erica. You got your snacks ready? That's awesome. I have coffee too, Carla. So let me have a sip. Hi, Nicole. So many people. Guys, I don't know if you can tell how nervous I am. It's my second live stream, but I'm still nervous. I I don't think I will ever get used to it. So let me just have a sip. Yes, you again. It's so awesome you're here, though. I love that. <laughs> Everything's perfect. Well, that's awesome. So first off, let me have a look at the poll. So right now it's it looks like it's 50 50. So 50 people already have found their perfect sketchbook. That's a lot in my opinion. So I haven't found the perfect sketchbook just yet. But to be honest with you guys, I don't think that the perfect sketchbook exists for me. But that's just because uh, I'm a mixed media artist. So I can imagine that if you work just on watercolors, you can find your perfect sketchbook pretty easily if you have the money. I heard really good things about the Etcher sketchbook. I haven't gotten it yet because it's really pricey. But as for mixed media, I think it's really complicated because it's it's really, I, I don't know. Just think of it, a paper that can take pretty much any medium. That's crazy to me. So today we're gonna have a look at this beautiful sketchbook here or two of them. Let me switch the camera. Uh, there you go. So has anyone heard of these sketchbooks before? I'm really curious. Let me read through the comments. Uh, hi, greetings from Berlin to Ecuador. I did great last time. Thank you so much, Carla. Kirsten, good evening. Lisette says, I think the same since I also work with mixed media. Exactly. So without further ado, let's just talk about these sketchbooks. So first off, it's not a new purchase. I've been having these sketchbooks for, let me think, at least half a year. But I mean, just look at them, how beautiful they are. They're so beautiful and also they were kind of on the pricier side. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I got these sketchbooks for many, many reasons, but one of the reasons was also because they're just so gorgeous and I looked at reels on Instagram and everybody's posting their beautiful sketchbooks and my sketchbooks, they are, all of them are ugly sketchbooks to be honest. And I got them with a purpose to maybe put a little more effort into my sketches, but I just gotta be real, guys. I don't think I will ever be this kind of um, sketcher. Is that a word? Um, so yeah, I mean, 
you saw me on my last live stream. I like to put a lot of effort and a lot of time into polished pieces, into finished works. But that's why I love sketchbooks so much, because this is the place where I give myself the freedom to not be as precise, you know? So I'm gonna break into these sketchbooks today, both of them. And uh, if you are expecting amazing art pieces today, this is not the stream for it. I'm sorry to break it to you, but today's uh, not the day for that. Okay, uh, let me read. I really love the ones from Royal Talents, but I mostly work with graphite. I really like the Royal Talents ones. Um, the only thing they're not really good at are watercolors, but honestly, I'm not too surprised. But these sketchbooks I got before I got the Royal Talents Art Creation sketchbooks. So first, let's talk about the brand. So these are by Odd Orange. And Odd Orange is a brand that um, was founded by a lovely young woman from the UK. Her name is Morgan Grice, and she is an illustrator herself. I don't know how old she is, but she looks pretty young. And basically she, let me actually get my, because I got notes. I don't want to forget about anything. So yeah, she's based in Telford. Do you know where that is? So Telford, I learned is in the West Midlands. It's in central UK, northwest of Birmingham. And uh, she founded Odd Orange, I think a little over a year ago. So she launched her stationary line, I think exactly I think it was on 1st of February 2022, so during COVID. So let me just show you a slideshow because I'm a huge fan of slideshows. So this is her website. And what you see here, the sketchbook in the center is the sketchbook I got. Uh, it's a hardcover sketchbook. And uh, before you go to her sh shop and try to order it, um, the thing with these sketchbooks is they're all handmade by herself. So she picked the paper, she's cutting the paper, she's doing the book binding, she's doing everything herself. Um, so Morgan Grice, this is her, by the way. Um, I've been following her on Instagram and I've been really, I'm, I'm super impressed by her. She is not only an amazing illustrator, but she seems like such a nice person. And it's just so, so impressive that, you know, she's doing this pretty much all by herself. And she also has a YouTube channel. I put down all the links for you to her shop, to her Instagram, to her uh, YouTube channel. And there was a day I binge watched her channel. I watched every single video. So basically she's been documenting uh, her entire journey, you know? So she's the CEO and the founder and she's doing the sketchbooks. She's making them herself. I learned that this entire orange thing blew up so, so much. Um, she had a hard time to keep up with all the orders. Uh, so basically how it works is you subscribe to a newsletter and she will then put up a pre-order. And uh, so she knows pretty much how, how much she has to, you know, how many sketchbooks she um, has to make. And then as soon as they're available, she ships them out. So the first two times I think I totally missed it I 
was too late. I couldn't order them. They were all sold out. But the third time I was really successful and I'm glad that I got them. Um, yeah. So I'll show you just some more impressions. This is her. Again, she's an artist herself and it's so, so cool. Um, her journey. Um, um, all right, wait a second. I got to gather my thoughts. All right. Uh, so the cool thing about on orange is uh, I haven't made it just yet, but she's also hosting um, drawing sessions, live drawing sessions. So there are these monthly Zoom sessions where you can just join and there's, um, you basically sketch uh, in your sketchbook in a group. You may share your camera, but you don't have to. And there's always a topic and she provides all the references and I heard that people have such a good time. Yeah, so really, really, really curious about the sketchbooks. So her goal with these sketchbooks was basically to make the perfect sketchbook because she there, there was always something that bothered her about every sketchbook and uh, let me just test it today because this sounds exactly like me. So this could be me. I mean, it sounds, I don't know. I, I think the closest sketchbook to the perfect sketchbook I have in my collection, but mind you, I don't like to spend a lot of money on sketchbooks, which is uh, ironic because these sketchbooks were really pricey. But I think the closest is actually a pretty cheap sketchbook. And that is, I don't know if you know the brand, but I'm going to show you. Just give me a sec. So it's these sketchbooks here. Uh, so again, it's a UK based uh, company. So those are the Pink Pig sketchbooks. And I like them because they really do take pretty much every medium. So this is a mixed media sketchbook with a little thinner paper. And I like it because, again, the watercolors, they don't look too great in the sketchbook, but you can at least put watercolor on this paper without it um, peeling or anything, which I think is pretty cool. And this here, this is actually a watercolor sketchbook by the same company. So again, this is Pink Pig and they're really affordable. So what is, this is, by the way, this is like my um, compendium for textures and brush strokes. And this is, um, I'd say it's hot pressed. So there is pretty much no texture in here, but I like these sketchbooks a lot. The only thing I dislike about them is <laughs> it's ring bound. I don't like ring bound sketchbooks at all, but honestly, for this price, it's really good. So that is that. Now let me read through your questions again. Let me see. I've heard of Pink Pig. That's cool. The piggies on those sketchbooks are so cute. I agree. Uh, <laughs> piggies. Uh, uh, That's impressive what she's done with Odd Orange. It is. I agree. So it's the price can be a shocker. So this, let me actually just get rid of the sleeve. Let's maybe start with this one first. So this is a hardcover sketchbook and 
as you can see, it's made for mixed media, 72 pages, natural white, which I like. And this is the heavier paper. It's 190 GSM and this one's smooth. Whereas this one, it's 150 GSM and fine grain. And this is soft cover. your sketches look really good just what sketchbooks are for thank you thank you so much yeah I'm really anxious about showing my sketches I don't know I mean it's again it's uh, some sketches I would show of course but I again have that habit of journaling in my sketchbook as well so I am scared that I by accident <laughs> would show you uh, some of my journal entries, you know. Let's maybe check out this one first. So we don't need my camera right now. So again, so maybe here we can have a look at the binding. It looks really well made and it feels sturdy. I'm a little worried about this here though, because this is taped on and I'm a little anxious that it will come off or, you know, when you put it in your backpack, I mean, here is a hint of the edge coming off, but then again, I could never do anything like this myself. What I like about this sketchbook, this is by the way from her Triadic collection. So the Triadic collection is uh, the sketchbook has a color theme that is Triadic. So here we have a purple with a chartreuse, I think this color is called, and a light green. And you can use the sketchbook like this. Oh my god, look at this by the way, isn't it gorgeous? So you can use it both ways, basically. And I am undecided yet, but I think I want this to be the front. I am guilty of not using them as don't want to ruin them with my bad art. Uh, I feel you, PJ, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, uh, but honestly, I've been doing this for so long now and uh, so many of my sketchbooks are untouched and I don't want to become a sketchbook collector and that doesn't work in her sketchbooks, you know. You just need to put bookmarks in the pages you want to show us. Yeah, maybe that, maybe that, but that needs to be something I got to prepare beforehand. All right. Let's have a look. Okay, and by the way, I heard these sketchbooks are designed to lay flat. So this first page here, I mean, this is normal for every sketchbook pretty much. And it is true. The paper is really, really smooth, super smooth. I don't know if you can see it. I mean, if it's smooth, it would be weird to see any texture, right? There is no texture. And this paper white, honestly, is perfect. I love it so far. So if it's supposed to lay flat, let me just press here. I mean, this, this is awesome. It's almost flat. I mean, it's, wow. Okay, so far, I'm impressed. Uh, Blanca says, PJ, you're not alone. I've done nothing but stare at my B book lol. Oh, right. So the B paper has a sketchbook as well, right? Hi, Jennifer. So this is that and what I'm going to do is because I like to keep these notes. Oh, by the way, I sent Morgan Grice a message on Instagram because 
I was pretty sure people would ask what kind of paper it is, you know. What paper exactly, because it only says uh, mixed media and natural white. And that's it. And she said that it's called the Everyday Artist Paper. It does, Moni, and it's lovely. Shout out to all the lurkers. <laughs> Alright. Now this one. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I uh, This one actually came slightly damaged. So this is supposed to have a fine grain. I mean, damaged sounds worse than it is, but there was a flaw. And it was this corner up here. And I don't know how this happened, if it was during shipping, but I don't think so because it was uh, packed pretty well. I can only imagine that uh, the blade was maybe too blunt or something. So this happened and also, was it here? I, yeah, so it was here. So this second page has this, what is it called? <laughs> in, in Germany we say Eselzbohr. Uh, but honestly, this is nothing. Um, I mean, this could happen to me anytime, you know. And this is a sketchbook. It's supposed to be used, so. I'm not mad about that, but if you might be um, really strict about uh, your products being, you know, absolutely flawless, you know, then I'm pretty sure just because I had a chat with her, not just uh, yesterday, but I think a, like half a year ago and then a year ago again, she seems like such a lovely person. I cannot imagine that she would not. Uh, give you a discount or send you another sketchbook Jennifer I want to try the pink pig Yeah, I mean it's again. I don't know how much it is in the US if it is available to you But here I can get it on German Amazon's on German Amazon and I think the a format was Something like 12 euros, and I think that's really good Okay, a good question. So Jennifer is asking, is the sketchbooks you are looking at now good for watercolor? Um, yes and no. So this one is the sturdier one. And this one, uh, it says on her website that this is good for gouache and you can also use a little bit of watercolor on it. But this one here, you, can do light washes but it's not supposed to be used like a watercolor sketchbook so i this is what i'm gonna do today i will try pretty much all mediums except for oil or some i will try many mediums in both of them but if i do like a i mean if i do a sketch uh a decent sketch i would use gouache and watercolors in this one I think. In fact, I want to stress test this sketchbook. And this one, I would probably use brush markers and then use some water brush to blend the colors. Or maybe use gouache uh, with very little water and maybe acrylic gouache. I mean, I'm not decided yet. I will just go with the flow. So yeah, and the prices. Uh, let me go to her website because you will be curious about the prices. So on her website, it says our next restock is coming soon. Um, and it says get notified. And if you click on the get notified, you will uh, be forwarded to a mailing list. And now to the sketchbooks. The only thing that bothers me a bit is I don't think she's she runs a four format just yet uh, 
but I see that she now has notebooks with dot grid. And so that's a new thing. And also there are now these slim sketchbooks. Slim sketchbooks that are a little smaller, a little smaller than this one and a little thinner. And those are the cheapest. So the slim sketchbooks are 18 euros. Uh, this one here uh, is 36 euros. And this one was the most expensive one. So this one was 51 euros. So, I mean, I think it's an expensive sketchbook, but having followed her journey um, and just knowing that's, that it is all handmade, um, honestly, I think the price is reasonable, though it's not for everyone's wallet. Okay, let me read through your questions and your comments. Uh, Anna says, I like the 100% cotton Hanamuna sketchbook. I have a Hanamuna watercolor book, but I'm pretty sure it's not 100% cotton. I think um, they must have changed something about their sketchbooks, though, because everybody's praising them. And the one I have from 2018 is pretty meh. Um, you need to try. I really enjoy that paper. Which one? The Hanamuna? I mean, so many people praise it. Maybe I should give it a try, but maybe I should use up what I have first. Uh, I don't want to become a hoarder. The cotton is new. Ah, good to know. Thank you. Mm. I'm semi lurking until I finish my popcorn. <laughs> I Oh, Brianna says, I keep two sketchbooks at a time, one for finished stuff and one for sketches, because I like to do finished stuff in books a lot. Uh, in books, here's the thing. I would like to do that too. <laughs> but guys a4 format is still too small for me for finished stuff i <laughs> i know i uh i'm weird uh all right guys because last time someone said i'm procrastinating let's not procrastinate mm. Let me show you the references I have for today. So my plan is I just want to doodle a bit basically and test materials. That's my priority. Not to make something super duper beautiful. And I was thinking since the brand is called Odd Orange, I'm gonna start with an orange first. Okay. Let's go for it. So maybe let's start with this one. A sip of coffee first. I also love the covers for these. <clears throat> That's the thing. They look so precious. I'm really anxious about breaking in them. But we gotta do it. And what I like to do is usually the first pages I would just use for testing materials real quick. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's start with this acrylic marker. Uh, you haven't been procrastinating at all. You're doing a review and doing it properly. <laughs> Thank you. So let's just flood it with stuff. Okay, so this is the thinner paper. And I can already tell it's um, P2 
peeling a bit, but to be fair, it might be uh, some peels left on on this felt tip here. I'm going to lurk, but we'll chat now and then. Sure, go on ahead. Next, a Molotov acrylic marker. Okay, no, it's, I don't know if you can see, but it is tearing a lot. So this sketchbook that I already know, oh, it bled through. Oof, so this one is not for acrylic uh, markers. And I am also anxious about using gouache in this sketchbook. All right, what else? Let's try some brush pens. Oh, and again, it's peeling. Is that the right word? Let me move the camera a little closer. There. This sketchbook will be for colored pencils. So those are new color twos. And of course I will use them with water. Let's see what happens. So what do you think so far guys? What's your impression? Maybe this one is just for dry medium. I mean, I'm pretty sure I read something about light washes. So this here works good enough. Nothing's visible on the other side just yet. But this paper really doesn't like the alcohol markers. Or not alcohol markers. What am I saying? Acrylic markers. Jesus. Then, how about. Let's do watercolors, guys. So, this is my pastel palette, is what I call it. Many of the colors in here have PW6 in them. Let me just read on their website again. Handmade in our bindery and built for ultimate flexibility and strength, our books are designed to prevent creative block and encourage artistic freedom. Um, details. Our heavy duty professional artist papers allow you to use all of your favorite mediums without fear of buckling or pilling. Uh, find your perfect paper here. Ah, okay. So this is the everyday artist paper in fine grain, 150 GSM. The lightest of the two mixed media papers. Our everyday option is perfect for laid back daily use. It's robust without being too bulky. It has high absorption and an outstanding color payoff and vividness. With a smooth surface and a slight tooth, this paper can hold graphite, colored pencils, pastels and markers exceptionally well. Paint and wet media 
also sit nicely, but we recommend avoiding multiple layers of water. This paper comes from an eco-conscious mill that contributes to many environmental initiatives. All right. So this is not how I'm supposed to use this paper, but I'm going to do it anyways, because that's how I like to use my sketchbooks and I want to see how much this paper can take. So if I use watercolor rather thickly, this here is a oh, Shinhan Pass watercolor gouache hybrid and you don't need that much water for it if you want to use it like gouache. Ah oh, yes, I bet it does great with some color pencils. I hope the heavier paper can take it, yeah. But this is why I'm doing this, guys. I want to stress test the papers because if she says this is supposed to be the perfect sketchbooks, <laughs> that's a... Uh, bold statement, you know. So I, regardless of, you know, how this paper is going to perform, I have so much respect for her work and I will not roast her because I think her work is so, so impressive. I just want to see if it will bleed onto the other side. And so far, you don't see much of it. All right. Next, let's do some color pencils. There's way too many art supplies around me. So those are luminous colored pencils. There. The shadow is kind of bothering me. Colored pencil works amazingly on it. And now I'm thinking, because she mentioned she mentioned markers and these watercolor markers, there was definitely some pilling, but maybe works better with alcohol markers. I can already say that this paper feels much more high quality than many of the other sketchbooks I own. Let me get some Copic markers. love that lilac flower. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. I mean, this will bleed through. I need some scrap paper to protect the back side of it. Okay, next. 
next thing I don't quite like. And I'm thinking maybe this paper here is different from... No, nah, it's the same. It's the same paper. So when you're... When you use alcohol markers, what I don't like is, maybe I can demonstrate it like so. I guess you have a circle and you try to fill in that circle. Sometimes on some paper, alcohol markers would go beyond that line so it kind of extends so the stroke i put is much thinner but then it gets wider i don't like when paper does that with alcohol markers so that's a bummer all right so i want this to dry for a second let's do the same thing with the hardcover sketchbook. So this is supposed to be sturdy enough for watercolors. It's called bleeding. Thank you. Yeah, I never I'm never sure if bleeding means what I just demonstrated or if bleeding is supposed to be, you know, when it's bleeding onto the back side of the paper. I think as an art YouTuber, I should maybe go and learn some more of the terminology. All right. So same thing again. Okay, I can already say this works much better. And next was this Molotov marker. Wow, okay, this paper is good. Wow. Okay. <laughs> ah, if this can take watercolors, this might actually be the perfect sketchbook. Mm, next, we had the watercolor markers. Bleeding is when it goes through to the other side. Feathering is when it bleeds gently away from the line, but not through the paper. Thank you. Now I got it. So feathering, that term I know from um, when you write with inks, you know, with fountain pens. quickly usually I can blend these markers fairly well but it's not a technique I use that often to be honest but still if that's how you use watercolor markers it also it feels like it dries immediately no matter what you put on on it and it might be a problem with watercolors. Mm. Yes, with inks too. 
Okay. And this one. So this is feathering, right? What you just described, Mrs. Barnabas. This paper is super duper smooth. It's nice to see some of your favorite palette of colors though. <laughs> I'm trying to, I mean, I'm starting to love greens, but I still haven't really used it that often and I might today. Now let's blend it. Is not a hint of pilling so far, but this bothers me. Maybe the marker was too wet or something. Let me just try again. it happen you know hmm. but that I don't like okay next let's do the watercolor flowers again is that neo color ones or twos those are the twos so I have both but those are once you blend with water and so did I miss a question guys a little difficult to see on the smaller screen I'm not on full view so I can see the comment ah oh, I'll try my best to move as close as I can the thing is with my camera when you're too close it wouldn't focus Sometimes I feel things would be much, much easier if I was just into one medium, you know, because I'm into so many mediums. Uh, you know, not only is my art room cluttered, but it's hard to decide what to use next. I don't know if you can relate with that. But also, you know, things get super cluttered on your desk. And then you're just busy searching and looking for things, you know. All right, let's do that flower again. Neo color once is an I want for me, but I'm still resisting. Uh, I must admit, I now that I got the neo color twos, I don't use my neo color once as much, um, which is sad. Though, no, actually, it's not true. I like to use them 
Mm, for finishing touches a lot because they cover everything quite nicely and also I like to use acrylic gouache and flash paints and I was always fearful of using it above neo color once because I always thought it would resist it but it covers it really really well and that was a big surprise when I discovered that is there anything else you want me to try on this paper so next is going to be colored pencils but I think I know already that it's going to work really well and of course the Copic markers I mean I might try inks I mean it works well I'm not surprised one bit it's a super smooth paper Is anyone painting or working on something while watching Moni? I'm sketching outside for a bit. Oh wow, wait, what? Wait, so you are outside while watching the stream? That's amazing. But I did the same thing. Uh, was it yesterday when Sketches and Miranda had their live stream? So I actually watched them at work <laughs> and on my way home. So let's compare this to this. So I noticed that it's on this paper the rough one the one that doesn't like water <laughs> blending the colored pencils worked really good and here even though it looks really nice you cannot really blend them too well so you can still see the individual strokes and i used the exact same two pencils Oh. But I can layer on top. Maybe it works and you just gotta And there's more work to do here definitely to make it work. All right. I love ink and wash. I might try ink and wash. I'm trying ink and wash on the mixed media sketchbook. How fun. Now I want to try ink and wash. I should try it on both papers again. And so here's the alcohol marker. Let's see how that one behaves. much much better than the other one of course it bleeds through but honestly i've seen worse than that Mm. 
Moni, do you have inks, acrylic inks to try out? I have one acrylic ink and it's this one, my favorite one. You already know and it's my infamous copper ink, but I have regular inks. I have uh, Roran Klingner Zeichentusche. Uh, so I might try that one as well. So let's go with this one. I don't use it watered down that much, but I might this time. See, that's more on the thicker side. Oh, I'm so in love with this copper ink. I love it. So in case you're wondering, this brush seems to be contaminated. So that's why there's a hint of orange in it. But I don't mind. Ah, so you're talking about the weather? Ah, uh, today, guys, so for comparison, last week we had minus four uh, Celsius, minus four, four degrees Celsius, and today we had plus 20, so it's spring. <laughs> we have spring now. Let me get the inks. Zeichentusche. I wonder how much is 49 degrees in Celsius. I <laughs> bet you wonder the same about, you know, when we say something is like 50 kilograms. What does that even mean? <laughs> That sounds as crazy as it is here. One day 20 degrees, next day 12. Yeah. I hate that. Uh, I mean, it's nice when it's warm, but the weather changes. Uh, they're kind of not good for my health. I'm getting headaches a lot from that. But I hope it remains spring now because I'm kind of afraid that next week we might have snow again. 49 Fahrenheit is 9.5 Celsius. I mean, about 10 degrees Celsius for this time of year. At least here it's a pretty decent temperature. The weather is crazy in Belgium too. Snow last week, 16 degrees tomorrow. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, today was <laughs> today was funny. I went outside in the morning, you know, I went for a dog walk and it, oh, it was so nice. It's, it, it's smelling like spring. But then in the afternoon when I went for the dog walk, <laughs> I opened the door and everything was smelling like barbecue <laughs> and I got hungry. <laughs> oh. I love Texas and Arkansas. Ah, I want to go to the US one day, but it would be so hard to pick, you know, to pick uh, a couple of states. Ah. It looks nice every there, uh, everywhere. Like it's, uh, what would be nice would be a road trip from, 
either east coast to west coast or vice versa but then again uh, Seattle Washington looks nice too uh, what else do we have oh by the way I figured out how to use it now <laughs> a very very nice viewer uh, she made a comment and she explained to me when you put in the pen I don't need to close it so the close mechanism is basically just for when it's not in use now I figured out that the numbers every pencil I have in my collection uh, uses a different number I think the polychromos you gotta set to four and the luminance and the durbans you set to three Five. I haven't found a pencil so far that works with the five. Uh, but yeah, it, I'm guys again because I got recommended it by several people. I'm in love with it and I appreciate it so so much. Oh, actually, let's try these three things because I like to sketch let's try this one here first I like to sketch with ballpoint pens but on some papers it doesn't work too well but on this one since it's so smooth I can use it like a like a pencil and I love that So yeah, I use my ballpoint pens like others use pencils. So that works really nicely. And on this paper, it works well as well. Here we have a, ah, so just so you understand why I put washi tapes on some of my pens. Um, I put on all the pens that are waterproof, I put these washi tapes on. So I just know, okay, so this one's water resistant and the ones that don't have it, I know that, okay, uh, once I put water over it, it will bleed. Ah, now I see what you meant about the yellow flower feathering. Ah. Now you can see it. I mean, I can I show you again. This is on the watercolor paper. I mean, it's mixed media paper, but this is um, the sketchbook, the hardcover one that is supposed to be for wet media as well. Yeah. But it's weird because it's just this um, ochre color. Actually, because it looked pretty well with this color, same pen. Let's try again here. Okay guys, honestly this one looks fine. This is weird. That washi tape is a great idea. Yes, that is a very soft outline. Yeah, <laughs> the washi tape. I mean, um, I messed up so many sketches in the past because I was sure. M many of my brush pens look very similar and I always think, oh yeah, that's the waterproof one. Well, it isn't. And this brush pen is super fine but on many papers it feathers a lot but on this one it looks pretty decent i love my tea girl <laughs> i love my tea girl too some uni ball pen 
Okay, so this is a ballpoint pen with black ink. And it's on the wetter side. And I like it a lot for writing. I'm, I think this is the one I use in my watercolor uh, sketchbooks when I do swatches and I write down the, the names and the pigments. I like this one a lot. And then, ah, I totally forgot about it. Let's try acrylic gouache. So we have ash blue, what a nice color. Let's just use it out of the tube, not watered down. And now with some water. I mean, works nice. So I'm scrubbing a lot now because I want to test how much I can scrub without it pilling. I must say this paper reminds me a bit of the Pink Pig watercolor sketchbook I showed you earlier because if the Pink Pig is cheaper, I think it's worth having a look at it again. And this paper is smoother, I think. Okay, where did I put the sketchbook? There. Let me just compare the texture. So this one's smoother, yes, but this I always consider to be a very smooth paper. It's just ever so slightly rougher. But this one's heavier. So this paper, it doesn't buckle whatsoever. But this one, I mean, the, on this flower here, put I used a lot of water, and as you can see, yeah, there's some buckling, but I didn't expect anything else because 190 GSM. It is a thicker paper, yes, but I think if you want to have no buckling whatsoever, you gotta go for 300 GSM and higher. The more I work in this sketchbook, the more, the more I love this one here. Both of them are really good, but I, I think the sketchbook is is just perfect. You can, since it's um, very thick paper. I don't know. I think it's two hundred. Let me actually Google it because I'm talking about it, and I'm just guessing. I just want to know how heavy it is. Pink pig water color sketchbook. Um, 
info specs. Okay, from Jackson's. It's 270 GSM, this one. Ah, oh, it could be the perfect sketchbook. It is ring bound though. That's the one thing that bothers me a lot. Oh. But they're very similar, these sketchbooks. Did you say you found the perfect sketchbook? Fantastic. Yes, I mean, this is my favorite sketchbook. The only thing that prevents me from using it, and I have it in many formats, is really just, it's the ring bound, guys. I, I'm really not a fan of ring bound sketchbooks. Yeah, for, for that price, it's so good. So this one here, it's the A5 size on Jackson's. It says that it's seven euros and 80 cents. So almost eight bucks. And I think it's a really good price. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yay, I found the perfect sketchbook. This is a perfect sketchbook as well, though. I love the sketchbook. Thing though is, again, this one, this one is eight bucks and this one is 50 bucks you know and i don't think this one is handmade you know and this one is handmade by a lovely person who's an artist who who is a ceo of her you know own business she you know, she put so much heart, not just into the sketchbook, but into creating a really nice community. And both of these sketchbooks, I want to do some paintings in it and the other one as well, some drawings and I will, but I can already tell this is for mixed media. Both of them are perfect, but yeah, price matters as well. Well, I can imagine if she will ever offer bigger than A5, then I might rebuy. But this is just not my format. I need it big. Pink Pig needs to get on that thread bound life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Paper quality over binding perhaps is preferable. Oh, Jennifer just left. Oh, see you later, Jennifer. That pink looks fine to me too. Oh, sick, you're there, my son, bro. Praise the sun. Love that brush pen. I call it the manga brush pen as almost all manga artists seem to use it for filling out areas. <laughs> beta in manga terms this uh, one is not my favorite brush pen though I have another one that is my absolute favorite but it's it doesn't have waterproof ink in it but I will um, I will deal with that the price difference isn't worth it surely what do you mean I mean ah uh, I will definitely rebuy the sketchbook. And this sketchbook, I might rebuy in the future when I feel like I want to treat myself with something luxurious looking and to support her business, I think. But, you know, as long as we don't have a four formats available i don't think i will anytime soon uh i like spiral bound sometimes it is easy to fold it in half and gives more support when you're like on a sofa for outside uh good point anna um in the future i will not buy ring bound sketchbooks in um portrait format but in uh, landscape uh, because I like the ring to be at the top you know 
So I won't use it like like so because then the ring is not in my way. Uh, I don't understand why I <laughs> haven't done it so earlier, but yeah, the ring is always in my way. I don't like it. All right. Um, actually, because there's such a mess on my desk, I wanna just sort everything a bit. And then I want to paint an orange. This is still drying. It will be dry in no time. Just give me a second. Barnabas? I still don't get what you mean. I feel like such an idiot. The price difference isn't worth it, surely. The yellow one as opposed to your other one. But, uh, the yellow one? What yellow one? A yellow sketchbook? I don't have a yellow sketchbook. Annie says, I like spiral bound for travel. It's easier to sketch in a car. I might have to try one of the piggies someday. Yeah, please do. I really like it. However, it is very smooth. So if you are into cold pressed, um, that one might not be for you. I don't really like normal spiral bounds because I'm left-handed. That's not really comfortable for me personally. Ah, yeah, right. Um, true, I forget. There's so many lefties. My brother is left-handed as well. I'm late, but did we try Copic type marker to see if it bled through? Yes, we did, Renee, we did. And um, it did, but I don't think it bled through that much. Again, let me show you. Mm. There you go. I mean, on this paper, it bled through a lot. And on this one, and that's the thicker one, I think it's really good. Okay. Why not just use it upside down? I mean, it depends when it's, I mean, with a ring bound, you can use it upside down. But if you have a bound one like this one, sometimes, you know, it would bother me to have to hold it like so, you know, while I'm drawing, you know, especially on the bus. So I'm sitting like so, and then maybe I'm, um, annoying <laughs> the one who's sitting right in front of me I yes I suit mine I used mine also upside down I can't stand an upside down cover to be honest haha <laughs> if it's blank I could do that <laughs> okay I'll open the window because it's so warm in here. It's because of all the lighting. And let's do the orange. It's not dry yet though. Let me just smudge it. All right. Mm, 
all right the reference where's the orange there it is i'm gonna paint an orange in wash Okay, um, again, um, I think since I already have found my perfect sketchbook, which is the pink pig, using this sketchbook here, trying it, it just confirmed that it's really, really good, especially for that price. Um, I will definitely uh, stick to it, you know, as a mixed media sketchbook. But what's the question? If this sketchbook is worth it, um, for that price, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna say it. If I wouldn't have discovered my Pink Pig sketchbook, then I would have said yes. But I by accident discovered the Pink Pig sketchbook, the watercolor one, and now I don't think it's worth it, no. Unfortunately. All right. Why does it always switch over to the boot? I want to draw the orange. That said, this is still a really, really nice sketchbook. It's, in fact, it's an amazing sketchbook. So I want to use the gouache just straight out of this thingy here, of this travel palette. And before you ask, I never had a problem with mold just yet. And so I've been fortunate. Let's use... this cold erase pencil that I roasted in my last stream but since so many people love it I'm like let's just let's just try it so this is just a sketchbook so Yes, I understand that. Even so, the handmade is crazily expensive. It is. It is expensive, but um, again, it's not manufactured in um, a, what is it called? Like, um, how many hours she put into that and you... When you run a business, it needs to pay off in the end, you know? So if you ask me, um, is the price justified uh, for the work she put into it? Definitely. Um, is it worth for you as a consumer? Like, is it worth it when you have an alternative that is, you know, way cheaper? Uh, Probably not, you know. I keep seeing the brand pop up in my feed. Which one, Blanca? Do you mean odd orange?
Oh, my dog is having nightmares, so if you hear anything, it's her probably chasing a cat. Because, yes, she's that kind of dog. She doesn't like cats. I've heard good things about Artica. What what's Artica? And the yes, I agree. Again, the Royal Talent sketchbooks, the art creation ones, are really good as well. What do you guys think of Stillman and Burns sketchbooks? Because I hear so many mixed things about them. Some people think they're their absolute favorites and others don't like them at all I'm here's the thing I always get confused with Stillman and Byrne they have so many different sketchbooks Zeta Beta and I only got one it's the Zeta one I think but I find find it so hard to find a you know a sketchbook when I go on their website and compare everything. I'm like, okay, and where's the difference now? <laughs> you know? They have so many and many of them sound the same. You know. Another one, because we're talking mixed media sketchbooks today. Uh, another one that people love a lot is uh, the Strathmore 500, I think. And the fault with the tape and the dog. Here are faults of her that's simply not good enough to send them out at full price. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Um, that's why I showed you that. Because to some people, that's not a big deal. And to some people, that's a really big deal. And I want you to decide on your own. I like my big Venezia by Fabriano for landscape on site with dry media. Big and bold. Never heard of it. Uh, Nairi says, Have you tried Koval handmade sketchbooks? No. Mm -mm. No, I haven't. I heard of it though. I've heard of it. I cannot have every sketchbook in the world. Wait, what? Maggie is here? <laughs> Hi, Maggie. Welcome. So yeah, guys, creating cute art is around. And I told you that we're going to have a live stream together. And I already got my happy mail. Was it today? No, it was yesterday. In fact, it was right before I needed to had to work. And as soon as I was home, to not get tempted to have a closer look at it, to shake it and stuff, <laughs> I hid it in my drawer. So I'm waiting for Maggie to receive hers, and I hope it will arrive pretty soon. 
Maggie, I had nightmares that the sketchbook, uh, um, the sketchbook, that the packet, the package would be, um, would get lost in transit. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm so fearful. I swear by Royal Town's art creation sketchbooks. I do gouache pieces in them, marker, charcoal, and pencil also. They're so cheap and come in any size, color, and with so many pages. I mean, they really are good sketchbooks. I uh, will not deny that. But I think, actually, if you... I mean, is the A5 Royal Talents Art Creation Sketchbooks, is it cheaper than my Pink Pig Watercolor Sketchbook? <laughs> hmm. Not sure. I think it's actually a little pricier. Even if your package gets lost, I would enjoy seeing you get your stuff. Oh, come on, no. <laughs> Oh, I want you to get it. I want you to have all the goodies. Granted, I think he probably sent me so many much, much nicer things in comparison to me. I feel kind of stupid now. But one thing my brother always says is it's not a competition. Moni, I was gifted the Strathmore 400 series mixed media and it's 100% cotton. Really? The f Wait, the Strathmore 400 is 100% cotton? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I thought you just got a portrait size of the Venetia by Fabriano, the one with the red and white cover. I may be mistaken. <laughs> no, 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 Maggie says. It is definitely not a competition. Your bro's right. <laughs> he always is. He's my little brother, but he's always right about everything. He's like my voice of conscience. The A5 Talent sketchbook is less than $5. Okay, well then you have different prices um, because I paid almost five euros for the tiny square one. Okay guys, so I'm getting kind of lost in details again. I just wanted to do an odd orange. So as soon as it's dry, I'm going to use some new color and then some Posca markers on it. And let me actually use the heating gun. Thank you, Maggie. Let me mute myself. What did I just read? So your Pink Pig watercolor sketchbook had major sizing issues twice. Okay, that, uh, that isn't cool. Here's the thing, you experience something like this once, um, you might try again, but when you experience something like this again, like me with my um, Leuchtturm sketchbooks, uh, uh, you, you don't go to that uh, back to that brand ever again. Many people love Neustrom, especially for markers, and uh, I think also for uh, colored pencils. And uh, I I absolutely despise this uh, sketchbook. 
I don't know. I feel it's overhyped because I haven't been lucky twice and I don't even bother anymore. Which brand is the sketchbook Moni's currently in here? So this is the odd orange sketchbook. There's two of them. This is, wait a second. So this is the soft cover one and it's 150 grams fine grain mixed media paper. We already learned that it doesn't like water too much. So there is some pilling but it works really well with colored pencils. If you use alcohol markers, it bleeds onto the other side. And this here is an acrylic marker. Yeah, and this is their even more expensive one. And it's a, what was it? I think this one was 190 grams and it's supposed to work well with water mediums. And now I'm painting an odd orange. Odd orange. So oranges have pimples. So let me add them pimples. Honestly, not impressed with either of those sketchbooks, if I'm totally honest. That's good that you say that. Because again, I like to hear honest opinions. Sketchbooks, and that's why I made this poll. Um, I feel like sketchbooks is something where so many people are not in sync. I, um, with sketchbooks especially, I always feel like, okay, um, so many people love a certain sketchbooks and then there's so many people who just absolutely despise it. I, I think there is no such thing as a perfect sketchbook. There isn't. And well, preferences are just way too different. I also don't think there's such thing as perfect watercolor paper, but that's just my opinion. Because what many consider to be the best watercolor paper ever, eh, I despise, and it's the Arches watercolor paper. I mean, I don't despise it anymore. I learned to like it more but it will never be a go-to paper for me you know let me get my pascos dang the orange looks amazing now <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm not done yet because this isn't on orange. So I was thinking, what if we add some eyes? I hope you will not disappoint me. I think this is the one that behaves funny. Maybe let's just go for the mole top. Okay.
biggest need is an all-around book that handles watercolor and drawing. What gouache did you use for the orange? I used, well, this is difficult now. Here's the thing, I numbered all these, <laughs> but I lost or cannot find uh, the piece of paper where I, um, you know, put the names on. But in these here, because I have two or three of them, uh, I filled them with mostly uh, Winsor & Newton and Holbein. I have to go, but I'm so glad to have caught a life. Thanks for making my evening cozy. <laughs> Gladly. Have a nice day. So I'm not waiting for it to dry, I'm too impatient. Hi, Miss Ebony. Uh, I use my Windsor & Newton sketchbook for dry media and it also takes light washes, but I prefer loose paper for watercolor. I have tried a watercolor sketchbook, but it just doesn't work. I work in different formats and sizes and prefer the freedom to choose which paper I want to use. I also never have done a finished piece in a sketchbook, like even in a watercolor sketchbook. I think I have the same preference as you. However, I want the freedom to do watercolor washes in my sketchbooks. Haha, <laughs> I love that Moni. <laughs> the odd orange is looking cute. I think it looks pissed because not everyone is a fan of it. There, okay. Next, let's do a... What's the next reference? Let's do... Let's do the boot. I'm feeling like doing the boot. Blanca, do you have a channel too? Uh, I think uh, Blanca wants to start posting videos if I'm not mistaken. Am I right? <laughs> Maggie, I need the extra courage, lol, to start my English is very not good, lol. I think your English is very decent. I understand everything you, you're saying. with Blanca. Yes, you can. Blanca, I'm such an anxious person. If I made it, you can do it too. Trust me. What's your primary language? Yeah, I think Portuguese, right? I think Blanca is from Portugal. Uh, 
did I miss a question? Typing and speaking will be very different. All Google Translate ain't my best friend. There's there's many artists on YouTube who uh, you can tell that English is not their first language, but I think especially with art as a niche on YouTube, it's not, I think it's very for, like people will forgive you, so to speak, you <laughs> know, for English is not too good because uh, the images speak a lot for themselves. Uh, besides, I think it's really cute when people have an accent or when you can, you know. I think Fran Nerd, her first videos, because I've been uh, following her since, I don't know, when she started. I think uh, when I found her, she just started posting on YouTube. And you can tell her English back then was good, but n not as good as it is now. And it didn't make any difference, you know. People still uh, loved her a lot, and so did I, you know. Manka, English is my primary language and I don't speak it well, so no worries. <laughs> Oh, Miss Ebony. <laughs> oh. I love it how you all encourage Blanca to just go for it I have such a such an amazing community so I'm not decided about this boot if I wanted to not actually let me just go for something else I might just come up with my own pattern or something My favorite word to say in German is five, five, five. <laughs> a lot of fun. My mom taught me how to say I love you five, five, five. And do you speak German? <laughs> and that's it. But how come, you know, that you love saying five, five, five in German? <laughs> You'll get it. It's a, such a fun word. Say it. Fun, 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 fun. <laughs> What's so funny about it? Ah, okay, guys, it's happening. So now it starts pilling. Don't go over it too many times.
<laughs> you think that's hilarious? <laughs> it's even funnier because everyone's pronouncing five differently, like foof. Yeah, it's true. Foof. Yeah. Or 50. And because I'm from Berlin and we are. Uh, we say things differently sometimes. So 50 in German is 50. Uh, but in Berlin it would say 50. 50. Give me mal Fuffi. That's a sassy orange. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's pissed. Why don't you want to bite me? <laughs> Buy me, please. Buy me. Guys, it's good though. Because, look. I don't want you to go and buy the sketchbook. That's not the purpose of the stream. The purpose of the stream is... I got it. Because... I thought it through, but sometimes I would also get things in the heat of the moment. I, you know, impulse purchases happen as well. But this was something I thought through. The price uh, made me think a lot. Um, but then I decided I just want to support her and this looks so good. A lot of artists, also some artists who are, you know, popular on Instagram and on YouTube they love it a lot and swear by it and i just wanna see for myself but if you um i mean don't get deceived by my ugly sketches though right but if you're not impressed by it then the perp you know the stream was a good thing because if you happen to stumble upon it on Instagram one day, which I'm pretty sure you will, then you already know, uh, okay, this ain't for me, or you think, yeah, that's, uh, I want it. <laughs> Fünf. <laughs> I'm missing the entire chat. It's fünf und fünfzig. No. It's fünf and fünfzig. Alright guys, let's use my flash paints. Because why not? that you're doing this for odd orange what wait what do you mean do you think I'm sponsored or something that's not one you, what you're uh, <laughs> suggesting right because I'm not <laughs> so this flash paint here is semi-transparent so this won't cover too well. I love making a mess in my sketchbook. I definitely need to try doing a live. You make it look so easy, Moni. You have no idea, any. I um. I think I was more relaxed last time, honestly. I 
don't know how people can do live streams so casually. I always feel like you gotta entertain people and people find it boring. You gotta say something. But I am also uh, in the chat when other people uh, do live streams and I'm never bored. I'm having the best time. I love communicating with everyone. I love reading the comments. We laugh. We have a good time. But it's definitely different when you are the one uh, behind the camera, you know. Oops. Yeah, it's very pricey, it is. I think maybe that's not something that uh, that she wants to do, but if she had, because her brand got a little bigger and she had more employees and, and then maybe and the prices will drop a bit. Mm, but even then, I think the appeal of the sketchbook, uh, now that I know that my pink pig is actually really good, and yeah, you are right, the Royal Talents one is also a very decent. Uh, I mean, this one here is for water mediums, it's way better than. Uh, Royal Talents art creations, so we got to be fair. So the pink pig is still better than the art creations uh, And this one too, but yeah, the price difference is uh, quite significant and What was I gonna say? No, oh, never mind I can recommend Baohan cotton paper for an economical cotton option fluid one. Uh, ah, no, 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 no. <coughs> the Baohan paper uh, isn't that cheap, guys. I don't know why you think it's like the best option for cotton. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but then again, even sketches from sketches and scrubs, he checked for me. And a paper, uh, an A3 plus paper from Bao Hong isn't cheaper than my favorite water paper of all time, the Kansan Heritage. And it's even, uh, I think even the Saunders is uh, just as expensive. The prices for Bao Hong went up. And if you can get it for fairly cheap, then you gotta share that secret with me. Where did you get it? <laughs> okay, so this is supposed to be a question mark. The fluid is not... Uh, I, is it available in Germany? I don't think so. I check regularly because I hear good things about it. And I haven't found it so far. So this is something I think I even checked on Jackson's. So 
sure while this is drying, let's move on to the next reference. Uh, this, by the way, is this picture I took myself last night. No, it was first time I was in Sweden. It was in Stockholm. And the thing, though, is this is portrait format, but the sketchbook is landscape. Now let's go for it anyway. Arches is crazy expensive. There are other very good papers out there and I think art viewers don't give them a chance. It's arches, arches, arches almost all the time. Is it true that this is not how you pronounce arches? It's arsh? Arsh. The arsh paper I don't like. Uh, I think I'd have to pawn the family jewelry to afford Ken's heritage in Greece. Yeah, see, this is what I mean. There's so many differences, uh, you know, depending on where you are in the world. Is it still drying? Yeah, okay. Let's do the landscape here. Or maybe there. Let's do it like here. It is harsh as in harsh or march. Harsh? March? Arsh. Arsh paper. Arsh paper is German toilet paper. Okay. I need the reference to be a little bigger for a quick sketch. Let me just very quickly. Uh, okay, I think I got it. I'm stubborn, so I'll probably keep saying arches. Me too. <laughs> See you, Anna. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I refuse to say it like that. Arsch means Arsch means butt in German, so it sounds weird for me. Same, same. <laughs> Arsch. this one I want to try a watercolor wash and then later some colored pencils perhaps Mijello is my favorite paint. Full of it. Any? I didn't know that Mijello is your favorite. I just know that Mijello has my most favorite paint gray ever, and I have a lot of paint grays, a lot of indigos. The Mijello paint gray is just—it's mm, so stunning. again
I love how core moves. Has anyone here tried core watercolor? Yes. I have, I think, only two or three half pens of core. And it's because a really kind fellow artist gifted it to me. So she sent me some engrams, uh, some core. And what was it? Ah, and some Daniel Smith paints she sent me uh, as a goodie I ordered in her store. She just put some half pants into the box, and that, which was really awesome of her. And uh, yeah, and it is true. <laughs> it, eh, it's so highly pigmented core. It's so extremely vibrant it's crazy vibrant and yes it it moves so so well Core is fun for more loose paintings, but for me it's a lot harder to control. I love it for plain air, though very vibrant. Need to go. Uh, it's been good to be here. I'll see the rest on the replay. Good night. Good night! And thanks for coming, everyone. <clears throat> yeah, I can't say too much about core uh, since I only have three half pens I only use them occasionally have a nice night yeah good night So I don't know if you talked about it in the chat, but I would love to know what your favorite sketchbook is then if you were the one who said, yes, I did fi find my perfect sketchbook. And uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be a mixed media sketchbook. And then uh, what would help me at least is uh, you can maybe, I mean, if you want to remain anonymous, then it's fine, but maybe you can also say where you're from. Uh, so I have a, if I don't know a certain brand, so that I have a better idea, you know, of where you are in the world. Uh, because when I say Hahnemühle, most Germans know. But uh, I mean, Hanemüller though, that brand has become a little more uh, popular, I think, elsewhere. But, uh, but I don't know. Still, when I mention it uh, many times, I, still I hear uh, that I haven't heard of it. Fluid that I heard of. The fluid watercolor paper. But again, I don't know if it's uh, North American or Canadian, because a lot of Americans and Canadians always mention that paper. Or if it's actually something Asian. <coughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> Toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> Ash paper is a... Uh, toilet paper. I really like the normal Etcher watercolor sketchbook. The normal Etcher watercolor sketchbook. So is there like uh, a different one? You mean the white one? The white watercolor sketchbook? That's super expensive but gorgeous sketchbook. 
I mean, I may not judge the price because I bought the sketchbook here. <laughs> Uh, what did I miss? Oh, this is a good point here. Sometimes I think I would be ch it would be cheaper for me to travel to South Korea and Japan and bring an extra suitcase for art supplies. Oh, <laughs> uh, again, I um mentioned this i th ah actually i i think i mentioned this on um sketches and scrubs uh stream in the comments um but what i like doing is if you you can create an amazon account for amazon japan and you can order there and even with shipping and uh custom fees you save so, so, so much money and you can get the page translated uh, to English. So you might do that. Mm. Watercolors, where are you? Royal talents, very cheap in Greece. We have Hanamuda here too. Their loose sheets are good for handmade watercolor sketchbooks. I heard that a lot of people even like to use Hanamuda <clears throat> for their art prints, you know, when they create art prints at home. So. Where is the swatch card? And there it is. I've seen how it explodes on paper. Uh, what do you mean? Like, what? Explode? <laughs> I feel like an idiot. So let's go for a lash right sky. <clears throat> the sketch is so much fun. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you. So this is here. I'm just going for something really, really loose. That's how I like to work in my sketchbooks. I'm not going very scientific about everything as I do in my. Uh, <laughs> finished pieces, you know. I don't think much. I just put stuff on paper and then I when I realize oops that didn't mix well then you know and I leave it as it is. Or I just go over it with colored pencils and gouache and if that made things worse again then I don't feel too precious about it. But that said, I don't like when a paper uh, can't take water. And still, this one is doing fairly well. So far, so good. That's a beautiful palette selection. That swatch card looks so nice and moody. Thank you. This is um, maybe you want to have a look because I always love it when people show their palettes 
So this is my, what I call, mis miscellaneous palette. Uh, so maybe here you can see this is um, one of the core colors I have. This is Diox... How do you pronounce it? Dioxazine Purple. Uh, and the other core... Yeah, this one. Quinn Magenta. Come on, it's so good. Uh, Transparent Pyro Orange is almost empty, I think. It's this one. Uh, but it's still so highly pigmented. I feel like this will still last me forever. Uh, yeah, and this row up here is very, very nudey. Yeah, sketchbooks are for fun discovery. Love those golds and greens. I'm so glad that you're still around because I was afraid that, you know, once I <laughs> tell you the price, you all just go and whoop. And you just, you know, you're like, yeah, <clears throat> that's it, I'm, I'm out. So if you have a reference image and you're doing a study, guys, do you always stick to the colors you see in the reference image or do you stray from it a lot sometimes? I'm curious about that. In the fence. <clears throat> the fence lets me go for I'm feeling like this light red here and maybe I think the leftovers here on my let me give you a better view maybe there so this is some leftovers of, I think, Queen Gold. Yeah. So, just so you know, it's not dry yet, so it's most likely gonna bleed into the other colors. The two five by eight books I got are so nice. It's almost intimidating. Nice. Is that a brand I'm missing, or do you? Is that the size? The two five by eight books I got, or are they like handmade books? Um, even if I find the price disagreeable, Moni, it sure is worth it to stick around for the art and your company. <gasps> oh my god, um, you just made my evening. <laughs> yeah, I'm a peasant. I use my hands in my sketchbook, I don't care. Thank you so much, Em, I really appreciate it. Oh, Maggie, did you get your package yet? I just want to know if it arrived safely. Yes, any good question. <laughs> mm, it should arrive soon. It should arrive soon. Uh, ah, I forgot about the building. Not yet. I will email you as soon as it comes. Oh, Maggie, <laughs> can you send me an Insta message? Because <laughs> I read my Instagram messages even more frequently than my emails. I'm, I don't know, I'm not an email person. I know that everyone is. But I uh, oftentimes miss really important information. <laughs> 
that would be nice. Unless it's something, you know, confidential you wouldn't want to uh, share on Instagram. Yeah. Thank you, I'm just so excited. So am I. So am I. What do you guys think? Do you think I can do an entire spread in this live stream? If I keep going at this tempo, then probably not. To jump off but I will watch the replay later sure Maggie it was so nice that you came and what see you later and yeah have a nice have a nice Saturday so I'm not gonna use my silver black velvet brush for this I'm not crazy I was going to ask you guys something and now I forgot. Mm, what was it about? No, forgot about it. So guys, I'm but I, there's one thing I'd like to know because uh, there's one thing that I find really exciting is when people share what, you know, share what they ordered and what they're anxiously waiting for. So is there anything you ordered and you're waiting for, or are you all on a no buy? <laughs> Gouache and black velvet. Nah, not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Especially not acrylic gouache. Yeah, but it almost happened. I gotta focus. Well, still a no buy for me. Oh. Do you find no buys sad? Like, is it. I don't know. Here's the thing I. Uh, I don't think I ever consciously said I'm on a no buy now. Uh, I just have faces where I feel like, you know. I want all the things and I need them now and sometimes I feel like yeah it would be nice to have but mm, you know I can do without it um, and I don't know I usually have this face uh, I want to buy everything I uh, I tend to have it in around February and March so this time of year and I don't know why that is. And then there is a second, uh, second phase around October-ish, like September, October. This is like <laughs> uh, the next phase where I feel like ah, uh, I feel like I might buy new art supplies again. Yeah. Already got a stash of new color too this month. Did you get like one of the smaller sets or did you buy individual uh, colors or did you actually 
go for the entire range <laughs> or for a big set the new colors too i got i think they were two a uh, really small set uh, curated by some uh, by some artist I forgot her name she has a very complicated name but one of the palettes was more like turquoises and blues and the other one was uh, was more uh, fall colors yeah individuals i see life is too short for no buys as long as my wallet allows i have a handful of interests i cycle through where i buy things only for one of my hobbies for two months though ah, i see life's too short for no buy ah. <laughs> ah. the thing is though ah. I gotta really contain myself uh, mm, when I discover a new art supply from a certain brand. I gotta contain myself not to buy everything that they have, like their entire range. Uh, that That's the hardest part. I always feel like I need all the colors, which is just... Uh, I was going to say a bad word, but you get what I mean. It's, uh, I don't need all that. I don't. I will never use all of them. And I'll... I'll the, I think the only art supply where I feel like I will use up everything at some point. Maybe not soon, but at some point. I feel like, um, it's gotta be... Um... My acrylic gouache, probably. So I gotta sip some coffee. Um, I ordered the Roman Schmall paints. Anna, you did? Did you get, uh... Like those half pens they've been they released or did you get full pens we are still waiting for the tubes i mean the roman small paints here's the thing so many people are sad that they don't come in tubes but i'm i don't know i'm not too sad about it i like them out of the pen oh uh, yeah but of course, there's people who prefer to use pens, uh, um, uh, tubes. I'm reading Lisette. You said, yes, a brand called Ugly Sketchbooks. They have some fun colors that I can't wait to use. Wait, what? There is a brand called Ugly Sketchbooks? I gotta look this up. Like right now. Ugly Sketchbooks. Sketch book. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, thing is, when I Google the ugly sketchbooks, then I find the one by friend. You know the ones by friend Nerd or friend Menasis. I never know how to pronounce her name. Uh, Lisette, do you mean those ugly sketchbooks by Fran? Did you buy those? No way. Annie, it's early in my no buy. I have nine months left. I'm enjoying going through all of the art supplies I haven't used in ages. Oil painting linoleum block printing giant canvases i mean so true i also have oils i remember there was a commenter under my video they said 
Jeez, you must have every single art supply that exists. And I felt so bad when I read it because I was like, damn, I don't have everything, but I have a lot. And it's just crazy. Yes, please do. Uh, dinner is almost done. I don't mind watching you paint Moni. Too bad we don't have smell of vision. <laughs> You ordered the Roman schmaltz from Berlin. You mean from Peter's art? Best art supply store in Germany, for sure. The sketchbooks you're talking about, the ugly sketchbooks are a small company based out of New York. I see, okay. They sound so interesting. Okay, here it is again, the boot. I don't want the boot. I want this. I don't know if it's dry enough. Let's just... Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, that's a lot of clutter here on my desk. I think I'll just go a little crazy. We want some greens. And just make a mess. Enjoy your dinner, Blanca, by the way. What's this color? So this is like a darker green. I like these really mossy greens. I've been really into them lately. Like almost brown, you know? This is a Albrecht Durer, so it's a watercolor pencil by Faber Castell. And what I like doing is I actually like to dip it in water. I'll wait for a second. And then do this I know that's not how you're supposed to use them but I'll do it anyways I don't know I think it creates a really funny texture Yes, from Peter's Art. Thank you for the recommendation. They will send them to my mom near Stuttgart and she will send them to me in PT. So I need to wait a few weeks. Oh man, waiting for art supplies is <laughs> painful. I hope they will arrive soon. Yeah. I think Peter's art is gaining popularity in Germany now because I think only a year or two ago not many people knew about them but I think it's because they're uh, one of the few shops that uh, sell Holbein uh, products and ever since you know, acrylic gouache has become super popular, you know, ever since then, uh, everybody's looking for Holbein, that brand, and in Germany, uh, 
Peter's art has the best prices. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Is this just messy what I'm doing here? Or does it actually look cool? I, I'm undecided yet. Actually, on second thought, no, let's not do that. Okay, let me see. The chat isn't busy. Is there anyone watching anywhere? I don't know. It's so hard. Uh, I'm. It's so hard to monitor. You know how many people are watching. If I'm missing a comment or anything, multitasking is a. Yeah, I was gonna say a bad word again. water can you take I mean that's the thing with mixed media sketchbooks, watercolors or watered down gouache, it will never look uh, like the real deal, I guess. Binding isn't my thing really, but I can, uh, like, I'm a little more forgiving about that. But you know, the format could be um, now. The format is actually nice. What I think they should definitely offer is a cold press kind of watercolor paper because it is very smooth and some people are more into you know something with more texture mixed media has only ever worked with fat gouache layers for me or very light watercolor washes exactly and exactly my experience but sometimes you don't want to use just thick layers of gouache, right? Like at some point, uh, especially when the paper is thinner, it would just crumble, you know? Yeah. 
I'm not even looking at the reference anymore. Uh, By the way, these brushes, I don't think I ever talked about them. Um, does anyone know this brand, these brushes? Uh, well, this is one of my very few impulse purchases. Um, and I like these brushes, so they're the Polina Bright. But honestly, they're just fine. They're okay. And that's it. They are okay. But they were really, really <sighs> stupid expensive. And you know, when I saw the price, I thought, well, well there must be a reason for why, you know, they cost this much. They must be super nice. And, uh, yeah, guess what? I was wrong. It works. Uh, they work well enough for me to grab them every here and there. But, you know, it's, uh, I don't know what I paid, but they're not worth this much, quite frankly. Yeah. I've never seen those before. Really? I'm surprised. I mean, it depends on where you're hanging. Because when you're on Instagram, Paulina Bright is an artist. Uh, a very good watercolor artist. And she does mostly portraits. Um, and yeah, she would do these reels of her painting a portrait and then you know and you would see how she uses those brushes and if it i don't know either it's so well filmed or um it's the paper i don't know it just looks so stunning <laughs> she uses the how she uses those brushes it's uh yeah, very good cinematography on her uh, art reels. And yeah, I saw it so, so many times. And at some point I was like, you know what? This is, I'm seeing this ad all the time. I'm so curious. I'm ordering them. And they come from Australia. So the shipping was pretty pricey as well. Um, and yeah, but they're these brushes are an example of you know very hyped on social media um, they're decent enough but you know they're not like the holy grail of watercolor brushes absolutely not okay this is flying. Let's go back to the boot. Or actually, you know, I can always finish it later. I'm thinking maybe I can fit in a dog and a portrait. That would be cool. Let's see. Mm, there is a dog. And I feel like doing this yeah I want to paint this doggy speaking of which my dog needs to get eye drops and uh, yeah I would like to take this opportunity to go to the bathroom as well so just like last time I'd like to make a really short break so basically just bathroom, dealing with puppy, uh, chugging down some water. <laughs> oh, puppy! <laughs> you want to see my puppy? Come on.
There she is. So yeah, we're taking a short break because everybody needs to go to the bathroom every now and then, right? And yeah, I'm pausing the stream and I'll be right back. See you in a bit.
Okay, I'm back. Some of you might be gone to grab some snacks and go to the bathroom themselves. Um, yeah, I'll try to work a little quicker now because I really want to finish the spread today. So let's go for it. All right, let's do it. Uh, maybe I'll work some more on the boot actually. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm, I'm feeling like using colored pencils. So. Mm. This here should be dry pretty soon. And I used so much water. In fact, I stressed, <laughs> tested it. I rubbed a lot of water into this paper and to be honest there is barely any pulling. That said though, it could be just me muddying the colors, but it doesn't look too nice when you use squash in a thin layer on the sketchbook. Welcome back. Okay, and let's do some flowers. Mm. Today we talked a lot about this Royal Talents Art Creation sketchbook and I feel really, really inspired to go and use it some more because I did some test pages similar to what I'm doing here, I'm just casually uh, sketching some. But I didn't put much effort into like a solid sketch just yet. I might go and work in it some more. When I hear that you pay five bucks for an A5 size, that's incredible. The actual price is here, but I think uh, A5 is more like eight or nine euros, so almost double, which is weird because I believe Royal Talents is a brand from the Netherlands, so it should be cheaper for Europeans, right? I got myself some gouache so I can paint with you. That's awesome. I, I don't know why I have never done this. I like to, like when I watch live streams and it's uh, not a replay, it's uh, when I watch live, then uh, I'm more busy to spam my keyboard <laughs> and chat with people. Um, but when I have a drawing or a painting session or a sketchbook session, I love to watch replays of, uh, of live streams and I appreciate it so much when the host is reading uh, the comments out loudly so I can, you know, follow the discussion or, you know, the chat, even though I'm not looking at it. Yeah. And I try to do the same, but 
I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you, like any one of you has ever done a live stream. It's crazy hard to multitask for me. It's really, really difficult. Oh, cute. I paint stones with granulating watercolors now. Oh, like, oh, that reminds me of Natasha Newton and her beautiful, um, how, I forgot what she calls them. Help me out, guys. You know, the way she, sh she, um, she swatches, uh, what are they called? The little stone thingies. Like her swatches always look like gems. And I love that so, so much. And yeah, I think I printed stones with granulating watercolors as well. I think. Was it in this sketchbook? Let me see. Or maybe I just explored some stone texture. Yeah something like this. So this is interesting. Again, my favorite sketchbook, <laughs> the pink pig watercolor. I think what I did here is on this page, I tested uh, what happens when you use gesso. So this paper is gessoed and this is what it looks like when you put new color ones on top and uh, watercolors, granulating watercolors. It gives this really interesting texture, in my opinion. And here I think... Yeah, right, so this is a blotch of watercolor, and then I went on top with some Neo Color 1, but just very, very gently. Um, but where's the stone I was... Ah, yeah, right. So what I did here is, oh my, OMG, stone, I think, what have I done here? Ah, I think I know, so this is watercolor and I think I did some dabs of neo color too in white. So this color here, and I don't know, it created like a really nice texture, <laughs> OMG stone. But yeah, anyway, let's continue. Now let's do the doggo, this guy. The reference image is so small. You know what, guys? I think I'm gonna open another window because I need to see this doggo in full size. There. Okay, got it. Okay. Let's go for the doggo. So lately what I've been doing is I used to do the outlines of a sketch with a colored pencil, like a very light, uh, also like a beige color, colored pencil, uh, but now I don't know, I like to use this brush pen for that. So will it fit in here? I sure hope so. So let's do the sausage dog.
How do you guys like to do like the first light sketch before you go in with darker colors? Do you like using graphite pencil like most people? Wow, Moni, either you're trying to beat sketch a stream time or you truly love streaming. Why? Oh, it has been three hours? Oh my god, I gotta hurry. So my last stream was three and a half and I didn't want to make it longer than that. I mean, I can stream forever, but I don't want to waste your entire Saturday, you know? No, I'm not trying to beat sketches. It's just uh, I'm uh, I, in the flow, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So does this look like a sausage dog? Not sure. Anyway. I love your pieces on Instagram. I just looked. Oh, thank you, Annie. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I don't... I, I don't... Uh, I basically... I wouldn't say I abandoned Instagram. No, but... Uh, I don't post too often there anymore because here's the thing. I used to post um, sketchbook things like, you know, stuff like this. Um, and every time I did, <laughs> this is gonna sound ridiculous, but yeah, every time I have, uh, people would go on a unfollow spree. And I've experienced it so so many times uh that i you know i feel like i don't want to lose any more followers but i also don't want to adapt my art to just instagram you know so what i post on instagram is stuff i like for sure but I think I'm on a journey to kind of discover what I really like, I guess. I'm not attempting to find an art style necessarily, but um, how do I put it? Um, more of a, you know, workflow that works for me, you know? Yeah, so I don't want to focus on the likes and dislikes. I don't want it to affect me too much. And I think the easiest way is to really, you know, just ignore Instagram for now, I guess. And I find that people on YouTube here are way, way, way more welcoming of... Uh, me just doing my thing and experimenting, which I appreciate so, so much. And also, um, I'm longing a lot for a sense of community. And back in the days when Instagram uh, was fairly new, I remember people would uh, really take their time not only to leave a comment, but to have a conversation, you know. But these days, uh, I don't know. I guess Instagram has become a platform where um, everything uh, is just 
super fast paced I guess and as soon as something uh, takes longer than I don't know three seconds people just don't do it but that's just my impression I think I remember when Instagram was a new thing I would post a really ugly stuff like super super ugly stuff but I still got like <laughs> I don't know 200, 300 likes. And, uh, yeah. And I would also not just like everything, but, you know, leave a nice comment everywhere. And I don't know. There was always some sort of conversation going on. And these days, the best you would get is. Maybe something like, oh, thank you. And that's it. Which is really sad. I feel the same way about Instagram, Blanca says. I've only ever posted family stuff, but now it's so different. Ah, oh, okay, that's a relief, though. You know, I mean, it's sad for you and I and everyone, but uh, it's a relief to hear that it's... Uh, similar for others as well so that doesn't mean that it's uh that i'm doing something wrong you know i mean for instagram standard i'm definitely doing something wrong that is uh, me not posting anymore or not posting often regularly and uh i don't do many reels I would occasionally do a reel, but when I do them, it's more. I think I've done like twice, like two reels, but they're both basically just art memes. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I have a hard time getting the ice right. I love that dogs have these, um, you know, oftentimes those bulbs above the eyes, they're basically the eyebrows, they're a different color. And I love that with dogs because uh, when you draw them, you can give them such a nice expression. My attention span is greater than a five second reel, so I prefer real time engagement with the people I like. Blanca, I second that. I second that. And he says, it's all about what makes you happy, Anna. If you want to share your journey, go for it. If you don't, that's cool too. Exactly. M says, Instagram is too cookie cutter and geared towards fast content consumption for me. It becomes a chore to keep up with the trends and stick to posting what people follow you for. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Um, as soon as you start posting a certain thing and a certain style, it's almost like you're uh, forced to to stick to it, you know? And uh, I think it's sad. So this dog looks really sad because it wants sausage. <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna continue with it later, but now I want to do a portrait. Mm, what do we have? Oh yeah, ooh, I like this one. Let's go for this one. I hope I have enough space here. I should... Yeah. 
Lol, Moni, you're so cute. He's begging for sausage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this hot orange is begging for money. And this one here is begging for a sausage. And actually, I think I have a brush pen somewhere. so cute he's begging for sausage my dog has eyebrow spots too they're they sure know how to weaponize them when they're begging yeah i mean my dog here peanut she's um she's a cocker spaniel and just like beagles they are famous for <laughs> uh you know overeating craving food like crazy um, uh, and it's so hard to not give them more foods, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, they sure know how to weaponize them. Them eyebrows. Okay, I'm leaving to get ready to go watch a hockey game in 10 minutes. Yeah, go on ahead. Hockey game sounds fun. And let me have a look at the time. So three hours, 19 minutes. Honestly, guys, I think 10 minutes. 15 20 minutes tops and then I'm gonna end the stream regardless of my progress because it's nighttime here and I hope you had a good time anyways is an adorable name mine is a husky border collie mix oh that sounds so cute i love huskies i love border collies and granted the border collie my neighbor has is a mm, i mean it's not the dog's fault i think they got them from i don't know if they got them from portugal or somewhere so basically it's a rest a dog they rescued um, and this dog unfortunately is really aggressive towards every dog and so far the owners uh, I think the owners are really overwhelmed with him but it's hard to um, train an anxious dog 
and my neighbors, you know, the owners of this dog, they are uh, really experienced with dogs and also with rescue dogs, you know. But still, yeah, I feel really bad for this dog. It's very anxious. Yeah, have a nice night, Annie. Okay. Just uh, before I call this a day, what is your most favorite thing to draw, guys? What is something that you just can't stop drawing and it always provides you so much joy? What would that be? Obviously, it's um, portraits. I still don't think I'm really good at them, but that is because for the longest of time I've been, you know, focusing more on, you know, stylization, I guess, and not too much on anatomy. I always kind of, you know, winked it without all the anatomy skills, but I think that's something I feel anyway. I feel like I've reached a point where um, I really, really got to learn some anatomy. I have some basic, very basic anatomy skills, but you know, with complicated um, angles like this one, things get hard. So my absolute comfort <laughs> portrait would always be like a front view, you know. Uh, but as soon as it's uh, a different perspective, oh, I feel very lost doing this these studies that really helps and I should do them more but sometimes that's the thing when you're on social media in my case it's YouTube I feel like ah you know uh, I gotta put out a video so I don't have time for studies at the moment which is just so so wrong because that's how you learn so sometimes I would disappear for weeks <laughs> on YouTube anyway and when that happens it's uh, either I'm not doing too well at the moment or I have a very busy schedule or it's basically me being in study and experimentation mode 
another thing I want to learn uh, is folds because I love uh, drawing outfits, but I find clothes to be just so hard. Bye, Annie. <laughs> Until next time. So, Anna, you say you love drawing animals. Ah, I find animals so, so hard. Dogs, cats, and sheep. <laughs> and Lisette, you're just like me. Portraits. I love portraits. So, by the way, these reference images, most of them I got from Pexels, which is a, a photo website, like a photo database uh, that is free to use, basically. And that's where I found it. I never said I was good, Anna. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter if it provides you joy. Like, even if I, um, you know, even when I was, a uh, like, like a beginner, I always, always, always enjoyed drawing faces. And trust me, I was really not good at it. What a wonderful variety of art on your pages, Moni. Very nice. Thank you. Well, nothing's really finished. <laughs> but yeah, this is what my sketchbooks are like, really. So this is a really realistic um, demonstration of my sketchbooks. I would do stuff like this, and then I'd be like, oh yeah, I'll continue with it later. But then when I get back to it, I'm like, I mean, I don't need to finish it. I, you know, I learned something here. So I basically, I studied a post and I kind of nailed it and that's good enough for me. And same here, I learned that, uh, you know, maybe I should be a little more precise and uh, patient, uh, wait for colors to dry and think maybe a little, you know, because here I use this, um, watercolor marker but I touched it with the water and then it just uh, blend so now I could work on cleaning it up and to add more outlines and everything clean it up and build you know better values but I feel like you know that's good enough for me and I just move on so here I will you know add some more colored pencils and this tree I will doing gouache as well but same thing here if i don't feel like you know working on something then i won't i would rather than spend my time really looking at something and um thinking what will i do different next time you know like in this case uh this uh, green is kind of the green from the reference image, but should be way, way lighter. And that's enough for me, you know? I know, okay, I could now go in with a lighter wash of white gouache and, you know, and kind of kneel it. I, and I might, but not tonight, because the stream has been way, way, way too long already. So noses are one of the hardest thing to draw. And um, I wish I knew how to stylize them proper. <laughs> yeah.
comments. Uh, I've seen people sketching with their brushes. Yes. I always wanted to try that. Basically sketching with paint. And I think somebody even suggested that to me. Was it in a community post, in a comment? And here is a thing I always do. I gotta get rid of that habit. So I would oftentimes uh, have the eyebrows uh, too close to the eyes. So the gap between the eye and the eyebrow oftentimes is way too small. So I gotta pay more attention to that for sure. I find myself doing the same thing with the eyebrows and eyes too. Yeah, I, uh, I think, I mean, I have an idea how to prevent that, but I never think of it. So basically what I do is when I have an, a reference image, um, I would focus a lot on the outline of the eyes. But if you instead imagine Mm, let me show you the reference in large. If you focus more on not just, you know, the almond shape of the eye, so to speak, but think of the entire eye, including the eyelid as a ball. So if you basically place the ball first, basically like so, and then you can work from there and then you would not place the eyebrow um, because right now if you look at it so here's the, the ball the eyebrow should never be on this ball but above it basically you know but you gotta be aware of stuff like that while you're sketching you know and the thing is i have an eraser and I can erase and I can correct it. It's just that I'm too lazy. Because, again, in my sketchbook, for me, it's enough that I analyze it. What I just told you, I basically tell myself, you know, and that's good enough for me and then I feel like oh, okay so this is what I gotta pay attention to and what I learned and then I leave it as it is you know so see now I'm placing them a little higher it looks much much better okay one because I feel like I'm doing the hair and then we're done for tonight. I just feel like if 
filling in the hair because I love drawing hair. So this Faber Castell pit artist pin, I feel like it might run. Like either it's almost dried out, or I'm actually running out of pigment. Ah, I see what you mean. That makes so much sense. Thank you. Ah. I'm so glad I said that you <laughs> get what I meant. <laughs> Again, uh, English is not my first language. Uh, it's always... I may never rewatch my videos or live streams as soon as I posted them because, you know, every time I do, I hear what I say and then I, I feel so embarrassed because then I notice all my mistakes but you all know that I'm not American I'm German and I'd even say for a German person my English ain't too bad not at all if anything <laughs> oh, Germans oftentimes they get mocked for how bad their English is I'm thinking, considering, maybe it's not too bad. Gorgeous. Oh, thank you, Miss Ebony. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. So this is uh, something that uh, I don't know why. What am I doing wrong? New color twos always break on me. Maybe I'm holding it wrong. I don't know. So I gotta hold it more at the tip, I guess. Oh, your English is far better than my German. Tracy, you think so? Have you learned a German? What countries are there in the world where you actually have uh, German classes in school, I wonder? Because sometimes I hear that people from the UK uh, or from the Netherlands would learn German, but I think uh, sometimes even... Uh, in Poland, I think, as well. I mean, that makes sense as well, because we're basically neighbors. Uh, but in the US, I don't think it's very common, is it? giving me ideas to use up my art supplies. You mean like your new colors? <laughs> Every time I'm going to a sketches live stream, <laughs> Miss Ebony, I don't know what it is, but it's so weird. <laughs> You always talk about new colors. There must be an obsession with new colors. And I feel like there, it's an inside joke that I'm not getting. <laughs> like everybody seems to know, you know, what it's all about. <laughs> but I don't.
So I don't know if this old Copic marker has dried out or not. Maybe I should put a piece of paper behind it. Uh, where do I have it? Um, such a beautiful sketch. You use a different medium so nicely and fearlessly. You think so? <laughs> but I'm so scared. That's all life on stream. Super scary. But yeah, my sketchbook is like... I feel like a kid in my sketchbook. I kind of like it. I'm always like... Oh, what do I do? You know, what do I use next? Oh, let me just grab this here. Oh, how about this? And sometimes it goes well, and many times it does not. And who cares? Like in my sketchbook, it doesn't matter as much. It's more embarrassing when it happens on, um, uh, like when I record um, something for YouTube. <laughs> oh, because I'm on the hunt for the last 21 discontinued Neo Color 2. They're hard, they're hard to find. Yeah, I mean, I got that. That <laughs> you're on the hunt for them, but I don't understand. Like, why? Why? First off, why are they discontinued? And secondly, uh, what's so important about them like usually when they discontinue colors don't they introduce uh, similar colors or are you an actual art supply collector like you need to have all them art supplies In my sister's high school, she had a choice of Latin, French, German, and Spanish. She took French and failed. Oops! <laughs> oh. oh. But German and Latin were only offered to sophomore and higher up. Why that, though? That sucks. Uh, so this is my one of my favorite things to do outlines with. And Again, it feathers on this paper. I don't know why. I don't like it. So actually, let's go with my ballpoint pen. I feel like I'm more in control with this one. I always wanted to learn French in school, but I then eventually I went for Spanish and I don't regret it. I love Spanish, but you know, I still kind of want to learn French. And then I had a decision to make. Well, I pick between Swedish, because I love learning new languages, used to be one of my biggest hobbies actually. Well, should I go for French or should I go for Swedish? 
and uh, I'm in love with Sweden. Sweden's my favorite country and I also have family in Sweden and I thought you know what like Swedish is a more logical uh, choice uh, so I went for Swedish and I love Swedish now I'm feeling like uh, I will not um, move to Sweden anytime soon and uh, maybe learn French but on the other hand my Swedish also got a little rusty you know you gotta practice and so either I'm gonna focus more on Swedish again and get to the point where I not only understand it really well and also speak fluently because I could speak fairly well but because I'm not uh, using it a lot and that uh, yeah I got worse again yeah however when people speak Swedish I understand yeah and it's funny people oftentimes they say Swedish is similar to German but then I learned that it's uh, there may be a couple of words that are very similar but uh, it's uh, honestly there's more words uh, in Swedish that are um, that Swedish and Polish have in common to be honest yeah There were 126 colors and now there are 84, meaning 42 were removed. I found 21 and I just want to find the other 21 to satisfy my set syndrome. Lol, I need help. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's what it's called. This is the perfect word for it. Full set syndrome. Yeah. Okay, I got you. So, wait, but you found 21 of the removed colors, so that's good. But where would you find them? Like, do you have to go and buy them on eBay or something? Or is it more like looking for online shops that still store them, basically? Uh, Franny, I'd love to learn Swedish as I found out I have Swedish ancestry. However, on Duolingo, I'm learning Danish as I'm going there in the summer. Ah, Danskjävlar. Well, Danish. <clears throat> uh, I think if you learn Danish, then you might have an easier time with Swedish for sure. That said, uh, Danish is a very... <laughs> I'm sorry if any Danish people are around, but I think... Yeah, and I love languages, you know? I love all the languages. Like, I wanted to learn Hebrew, um, but there are two, no, three languages that I find really weird sounding <laughs> and Danish is one of them so Danish people when they speak I feel like they sound like they have a hot potato in their mouth and I feel similarly about uh, Hungarian yeah mm, yeah but it's not like you know 
my ears are bleeding or something. It's just, um, it's really hard to understand Danish people because they have so many words in common with Swedish. Like, even the way you write the words is almost, you know, exactly the same. But um, Danish people, they tend to swallow the words a lot. You know, like they say, something there there's a sound coming out of their mouth but uh you wouldn't even understand it's um yeah they barely open their mouth while they speak i find and uh i know a lot of danish people and i told them and uh they took it with humor uh they kind of agreed with me actually but yeah and when you're going to Denmark, then it's amazing that you're learning Danish. My best friend actually, she wanted to go to Denmark as well. And she learned, or wanted to learn Danish on uh, Babu. <laughs> Babu, <laughs> do you know what Babu is? <laughs> that word is just so funny. So yeah, it's like Duolingo basically. Oh yeah, and uh, she wasn't enjoying it, and then she decided, nah, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna go to Denmark after all. And I don't know, I feel like it has something to do with uh, <laughs> the language. <laughs> she really didn't like learning Danish. So yeah, what do you think about the portrait? I'm not sure. Looks unfinished, but I guess it's fine. Mm. I thought I should, as this is my fifth time going in and I only know how to say hello and thank you. Um, yeah, <laughs> Freddy, <laughs> yeah, uh, you should probably know more than a hello and thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's, um, if you have to learn a language, I feel like if you really have to, for some reason it's harder, you know? I don't know, maybe it's just me. That goes, you know, for everything, if somebody to tell me or I tell myself you have to learn anatomy you know oh, I don't know every fiber inside of me you know resists like I, I don't want to <laughs> yeah guys again the sketchbook yes it, it, it is super expensive yes but so far I've been enjoying it a lot actually do I enjoy it more than uh, my pink pig or my art creation? I don't know. It's decent though. Hallo und danke. <laughs> bitte, bitte. I think the face having no color actually adds to the portrait. It's like a neutral region between the two strong primaries. I haven't even thought of that. This is so cool though. Because, you know, I, uh, I got a bad feeling there. Feeling like, okay, I'm about to end the stream now because I don't want you to sit here having to watch me forever and I felt kind of bad about her you know um, having white skin basically but I don't know for some reason I feel like that's not just me being lazy by the way I for some reason I feel like you can tell that this is a beautiful woman of color you know 
I don't I haven't even added much shading. I think what makes uh skin of dark color so beautiful is just there's so much contrast in the skin. And this is for me somebody who rendering skin is the hardest thing for me and also like in a portrait the least enjoyable you know but with darker skin tones you kind of have to but now that i'm working on this i realized the contrast that you would need uh in this case comes from i guess the lips they look very shiny and also you have a lot of super dark and super light tones here around the eyes and that's probably that maybe that's what, why it works i don't know i'm just guessing i'm just guessing all right i think that's good enough for a sketch in a sketchbook so i gotta add my signature molds I always add two of them and yeah I think uh, guys almost we almost got it okay just one more thing let me just add a tree real quick and then me go and <laughs> have dinner lunch Let's just do some let's just add a tree real quick. So then it can dry and I can maybe go in with colored pencils later. I don't know. So now it looks A little more solid, I guess. And there. Okay. I have a mole on the same side, but only one. All the sketches came out beautiful. Lee said, I have a, I gotta make a confession. I also have a mole, just one <laughs> at this spot. Yeah, so it's not just you. So what have we learned today? Mm. Um. We learned today that no matter how fancy this sketchbook is, and I love it. I really, really do. And same goes for... Oh, sorry. Look at this copper. Oh. And same goes for this one. I think they're both amazing sketchbooks. The good thing is, now that I started to work in them, I did something to them, I am no longer afraid to use them. Because guess what? They have some fancy clothes, they look really nice, but at the end of the day, they are just sketchbooks. They're good sketchbooks, but they are not celebrities. They ain't, you know, like super duper special or anything. So I learned that my Pink Pig is an amazing sketchbook and so is Talon's Art Creations. And I feel good that I supported um, a really nice business run by just one very, very amazing illustrator and uh, a super kind person. I really like Morgan Grice, but yeah, mm, 
I will probably... I might, if they have better prices, if they offer bigger sizes, I might in the future, might order again, even if it's a little more expensive than Royal Talent or Pink Peak. But um, yeah, I don't think I will order from them anytime soon. So this was so fun to hang out with everyone and you, Moni, so informative as well. I hope so. I appreciate it. Miss Evan, you think the spread is amazing. Thank you so much. This is my first like real spread. <laughs> and it um, like what I mean by that is uh, in a sketchbook, I usually never go past this line in the center. And this is the first time I'm doing it, I think. Yeah, there's even some space left here. I will finish this spread for sure, but not tonight. And uh, I'm super glad you enjoyed it. So by the way, the Copic marker, it bled through quite a bit here. And that's not too bad because I will, in these spots, what I like doing is I like to use acrylic gouache. Ah, oh, she took out the fancy gouache. <laughs> I enjoyed watching your sketch, even though it was near the end. Thank you, Franny. Again, you can always rewatch. Uh, so if you feel like you missed something, but I think honestly, you don't need to rewatch. So the resume, like um, the conclusion you just got from me is basically all you need to know, because in the beginning, I just talked about the business and um, a bit about, you know, the origin of the sketchbooks. And uh, yeah, now you know. I think it's a good sketchbook, but mm, it's very expensive and you can get um, very decent things for cheaper. Uh, she did a sassy orange, pretty food, happy hot duck, duck, gorgeous portrait and whimsical landscape. <laughs> Thank you, Blanca. Oh man, guys. I had a good time. Oh, sh I was gonna swear. I just see, oh man, I missed quite a bit because we talked about languages and, and then you said, uh, for me, a big factor in whether a sketchbook is enjoyable is the price since I only feel free to play around if it's something cheap. I feel obligated to make beautiful pieces only in expensive books. Good point. Good point and that's um, again exactly one of the reasons why I have hesitated to work in these sketchbooks. I felt like these are just so nice and so fancy. I. Whatever I do in them, it needs to be something very solid. I may not F anything up, like needs to be almost Instagram worthy. That's just not how I usually treat my sketchbook sessions. That's not how I sketch. Um, yeah. So, but now I'm no longer scared to work in them and I feel very, very much inspired to go and grab my royal talents as well. Mm. Ah, Miss Evan, you said it's the nose and lips that make her woman of color in my eyes. Yeah, maybe that. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, I just got lost because I looked at the reference image again and I'm just so mesmerized by her beauty. So I got distracted by that. Uh, the stream has been wonderful. And met some great people today on here. I agree. You were amazing. Four hours later, <laughs> we're still here, but I promise you uh, it's over. Um, so I'm about to end this. 
Say bye to my dog if you want to. She's right behind me. So, Peeny. Okay, she doesn't want to. <laughs> so, uh, good night for me. Good night uh, to all Europeans. And uh, to the rest of the people, have an amazing Saturday. Thank you so, so much for joining. And yeah, until next time, when me and Creating Cute Art will unbox our happy mail. <laughs> all right, guys, have a good day. Bye.